Chickasaw Park and the Chickasaw neighborhood is showing its resilience tonight. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on the WHS 1119. I'm Doug Prophet. Days after a mass shooting hit the grounds of the West Ends Historic Park, now condolences and calls for action. WHS 1119's Connor Stefan and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie were there with the community remembering the victims tonight. Don't fall down on our community, Lord. 54 seconds of silence for the 54 lives we've lost this year as of Monday. A quiet yet deafening reminder. Our youth needs to survive. For a hurting community. The contrast today at this park is a stark one. You can still see them remembering the two lives lost on Saturday, though on Wednesday, a different tone as they reclaim their space. One thing with the black community, we're never broken. This is us. You know, we wouldn't be here if we didn't believe in, in us. There's nothing like the black community, and we will get to get together, and we will uh, survive. Take a look. You'll see a completely different park from Saturday. Bringing the community back together, uh, oneness, and, you know, we all have a sense of grief. The lesson, with compassion, you can cultivate a strong and resilient community. We need to learn how to come together. It was just Sunday that hundreds gathered here from community leaders to elected officials, sharing prayers and pleas for progress. These guns, it needs to be put down. Today, similar calls coming from Louisville's youngest. It's traumatizing for me to even see kids and know that they're going to pass away. Like, I think that they should make a law where they take guns away take all the weapons away from kids. Take Continued calls for change. We're hurting, but we're banding together. We're hurting, but we're sticking together. The more you try to do what you do, the stronger we get. A clear message coming from this community rallying tonight. In Chickasaw Park, Connor Steff in the WHAS 1119. The Kentucky Derby Festival today announced that it will honor the victims of Louisville's mass shootings during a special moment that will be held during Thunder Over Louisville. It's going to be happen, happening just after 9 p.m. That's 30 minutes before the fireworks. A special fireworks salute just after 9 will remember those lost in the mass shootings and those impacted by gun violence plus the first responders who help save lives. The Big Four Bridge will light up in Louisville's official colors. They are blue and gold, but the crowd will be asked to light up their phones as well to show that we are Louisville strong before the drone show will start at 915. Our hope is that as we bring those folks together through our events in the coming weeks, we can help be a part of that healing process. It doesn't matter what event it is, but being out there in the spring in Kentucky um, almost has a magical effect. Thunder usually draws crowds of hundreds of thousands of people. They are expected to fill Waterfront Park Saturday for the event, but weather and safety is on the minds of many people. And we pick up with that as the WHS 1119's Taylor Woods spent the afternoon talking to people about their plans for the big event. And she's joining us live right now from down at Waterfront Park where the setup is underway. What are you seeing there, Taylor? Well, Doug, right now there are about a dozen rides out here. If you take a look behind me, you can see this carousel out here. But even if you look past the carousel, you can see the food, st food vendor stations are already out here in preparation of this weekend's festivities. Now, most of the people I talked to today, they said that they are very excited about this year's Thunder Over Louisville. Others I spoke to say it really depends on the weather, despite the violence that took place in the city last week. Thunder fireworks will lift off at 9.30 p.m. this Saturday, and preparation for the show is all well underway. You can tell by the excitement just a few days out. That's right. Absolutely. A thunderously good time. Yeah. Thunderously. Second, yeah, second, second year tradition. Mm -hmm. But some Louisvillians we found are on the fence about attending. They have mixed feelings about safety at the show. I think it's all perspective. I know we're all grieving from last week, and I think that's definitely lingering. From the Louisville mayor to police and festival leaders, safety is their top priority. We have every confidence, puts us on solid footing to be able to respond quickly and effectively to any eventuality. There are dozens of agencies involved, both uniform as well as covert assets. The violence of last week hasn't been forgotten by the mayor. To continue to enhance the strength of our community, to show our hospitality, to show the entire state, the country, and the world 
who Louisville really is. And then the crowds will depend on the weather. Uh, I hope so. It'll Thunder organizers the say weather. there will be favorable conditions for the show, but with strong winds and dropping temperatures, the reality for Thunder 2023. So we encourage folks to dress in layers. Uh, you might want to throw in a poncho because we'll blame the people who did not bring their rain gear for the, the fact if it rains. This group of tourists say weather won't frighten them away. They have a plan B. We're going to hang out by the fire pit. Hopefully we get an air show overhead and that's fine. Yeah. And again, this is what you can expect the weekend to look like. Hundreds of thousands of people packed everywhere. The kid rides, the food vendors. Now, the Kentucky Derby Festival said that they will monitor the weather conditions as it could affect the air show and the fireworks. They're also asking anyone that is planning to come out here to please keep your pets at home and not to bring any tents. Reporting live in downtown Louisville, I'm Taylor Woods for the WHAS 11 night team on your side. All good reminders there tonight. Thank you, Taylor. Well, new tonight, a Louisville man has pleaded guilty in a deadly shooting in the Newburgh neighborhood nearly a year ago. The Commonwealth's Attorney's Office says Robert Harris pleaded guilty today to manslaughter and gun possession as a convicted felon. As part of the plea, Harris admitted to shooting Leyland Hurt on May 2nd and on Plantis Place, which is near East Indian Trail. Harris said he shot Hurt, believing he needed to act in self-defense. He was sentenced to a total of 18 years. The male high school principal here in Louisville is turning to parents for help after the school says this week has started with fights. In this video from a parent, you can see two girls fighting in the cafeteria while staff members are trying to break them up. In a letter sent to parents, Principal Willie Foster says the ongoing violence is forcing them to increase security at mail. He urges parents to talk with their students about the consequences of fighting. All of the students involved are being disciplined. JCPS Superintendent Marty Polio addressed school safety concerns during the Louisville Forum at Vincenzo's today. Next Tuesday, he's going to present his plan to the school board for a weapons detection system. It's more expensive than metal detectors, but Polio says it's also faster. A multitude of people can walk through essentially at the same time. You're not having to completely empty your pockets of everything. Um, and so that's what we want. We don't want lines of thousands of students standing outside waiting to be scanned. Dr. Polio says the technology is similar to what's used at Churchill Downs for the Kentucky Derby and at the KFC Yum Center. New tonight on the WHS 11 night team, a Bullitt County church is now crumbling after a weekend fire. WHS 11 night team's Tom Lally and photojournalist Ian Hardwit spoke with the pastor. He says he's ready for the challenge of rebuilding and still feels blessed. In the middle of Sunday service at Full Gospel Christian Center in Shepherdsville. And we hear a boom. I mean a loud boom. Tom Walford, pastor for the last 31 years, said it happened fast as one woman started to sing. It's unbelievable what could happen in 20 minutes. When Shepherdsville Fire got the call, they had already been on scene of another fire for more than five hours. Still, they rushed straight there. We couldn't really come back here and be like, hey, we'll be there in a minute. Assistant Chief Justin Newton said an electrical issue is probably to blame for the fire. That left full gospel crumbling. You can see that. Pastor Walford walked us through the damage that'll cost tens of thousands of dollars to fix. It all started back here. You can see on the back wall here and it got all the way from there all the way back over to this side over here. If the fire didn't burn it, the water saturated it. Dozens of Bibles and Psalm books, even a piano. Does it play still? Well, not now it may not. See, got so much water down in here. Yeah, it does. How about that? But don't let the state of things fool you. Well, it's a mess. Pastor Wolford sees it as a blessing. I knew uh, no matter what happened that everything was going to be all right. Buildings can be replaced, but people can't. Luckily, when he's not in the pulpit, he's a contractor fixing homes much worse than this. The rougher it is and I get finished, the better I feel. With holes through the roof, a ceiling in shambles, and waterlogged pews, this church now holds a challenge for Pastor Wolford, and he's excited to take it on. I tell people I'm blessed more than the rest, and I, and I thank God for it. In Shepherdsville, Tom Lally, WHAS 11, on your side. If you would like to help Full Gospel Christian Center rebuild, they ask to you, that you send your donations to the First Harrison Bank, make it payable to the church.
Well, the primary for Kentucky's governor's race is less than one month away, and today four candidates made their pitch to be the Republican nominee. Kelly Kraft, Somerset Kentucky Mayor Alan Keck, Mike Harmon, and Ryan Quarles participated in this debate in downtown Louisville at 4th Street Live, hosted by Matt Jones and Kentucky Sports Radio. Daniel Cameron didn't attend, saying the timing didn't work with a fight fentanyl forum he was hosting. Among the topics, gun reform, the quote, woke agenda in schools, and why they should be elected over Andy Bashir. This morning, a poll from the Morning Consult Group showed Bashir has a 63% approval rating right now in Kentucky. Especially during the pandemic, he stole so many of our liberties. He shut down people's businesses. He shut down uh, schools. He shut down the in-person unemployment office so people couldn't actually get their unemployment. He violated our rights as Americans when he ordered troopers to uh, go to churches on Easter Sunday. I'm running because I believe in the Constitution. I believe that we should respect our rights, freedoms, and liberties even during a global pandemic. He has not one time tackled the wokeism in our schools. We have teachers that have a passion to teach. They need to be teaching our students skills and knowledge, the ABCs, not critical race theory. I think this poll reflects the fact that a lot of folks like where we're headed and like what's being done. And he can hand out checks like sticks of bubble gum, giving Kentuckians their money back. Uh, but I think the rest of us would say that uh, it's Republican leadership that's gotten us into this place to begin with. In a statement about that new poll, Bashir's campaign manager says, quote, his approach that looks out for everyone in the Commonwealth while bringing good paying jobs and new investments to Kentucky is why he is consistently one of the most popular governors in the country. The primary election in Kentucky is May 16th.